Welcome back to yet another episode of our series Rising Stars on the, which profiles the emerging talent of the music industry and on this episode we have with us a very talented singer straight from the hills Shubhangi Tiwari with us we welcome you on our show Shubhangi thank you so much Ajasti thank you so much for having me thank you so much for your time so Shubhangi my first question to you is tell us about your musical journey so far how it has been well so far so good <laughs> it's been great uh, i uh, was immersed into music as a little child because my mom is a musician she's a sitarist oh, wow. so, uh, those were like some of the first sounds i heard you know her playing sitar so i guess somehow it got in vibed in me and no matter what i did music has always stayed with me and uh, so of course like I have done my masters in another subject prior to taking up music full time and I was also briefly an assistant professor of political science but then I decided to take the plunge and become okay. a full time musician yeah. Oh wow that's great that's great so so far so good your music yes, journey Absolutely and some into music full time and uh, I've moved to Mumbai my career and uh, it's, it's very rewarding to be in mumbai because there's so many creative people very very talented people in such a small space you know so so the chances of meeting somebody you can be inspired by and learn from are so much higher because you know the place where i live very very creative people actors writers directors musicians singers so it's pretty exciting So, I'm in enjoying. contrast to that only who are your biggest musical influences uh your mother and definitely Nen. my mother her guru ji uh oh. or, yes uh pandit balram pathak ji oh wow that's good yeah. cool. and uh, other basically i started with indian classical music that's what i heard mostly at home um so there were some very great musicians like uh, Pandit Chit Kumar Sharma ji, Pandit Hari Prasad Chaurasi ji, who would be at home because my mother also curated uh, their travels to different countries, uh, concerts. So they'd be at home, they'd be practicing, they'd be talking music, and I'd be hearing that. So that was my first sort of immersion into music. And uh, after after that, I would say my parents would, you know, play uh, their favorite Bollywood songs. and so i would definitely say lata mangeshkar ji so anyway <laughs> sweet voice uh, you know that sort of like tuned everybody's ears for generations and generations of people you know set set the benchmark for uh, what great music sounds like so in contrast to that only um i would say uh, when did you realize that this was the this was it that i have to sing and uh, how did you discover your passion for singing that this is it this is how i have to do in future right um i think i was pretty young i knew i wanted to sing all the time because it, it just just brings me so much joy so a passion turned into career basically yes absolutely absolutely and then when i was um, i would sing a lot at the school level at the college level um just go with an adhyan hamesha music mein rehta tha and all those extracurricular activities uh, related to music mostly and uh, also theater a bit but mostly music i would always gravitate back uh so when i sort of became an assistant professor of political science mm-hmm. and i was teaching and i do enjoy joy teaching i it's it's very rewarding work um i also teach music now wow that's great you could coach and a voice healer what kind of music you teach um so uh, there are many aspects to what i do so uh, like one aspect is vo- vocal production okay. so like the mechanics of how to sing properly without damaging your voice uh using your instrument um uh, in the best possible way you know yes 
So technique, we work mostly on technique and the instrument per se. Then there's another aspect of my work where I heal voices that have been damaged due to improper technique. Oh, wow. That's so I, yes. For that, I work in tandem with ENT uh, doctors. Mostly, uh, I get patients referred from Gangaram Hospital in Delhi. Cool. So, um, so that's another aspect of my work. Then I... Uh, uh, also prepare students for exams if they want to give exams, you know. Okay. okay. So uh, it could be Western music exams. So it could be uh, ABRSM or rock and pop, you know. Uh, these are different boards, uh, for example. And I also teach Indian classical in the study. Oh, wow. Yes. That's great. That's great. So are you planning to... Uh study further for this music this kind of any speci specialization basically well to be honest uh, learning music is a lifelong thing yeah. you know so okay. uh, i could have been a great singer 10 years ago you know but the way i would approach a song the same song i sang maybe 10 years ago yeah. i would sing it completely differently now because it's the experience the ear training and you know just uh, you're a better performer because you've done it so many more times and you have improved upon your practice. You know, that has all sort of evolved. So it's an ongoing thing, definitely. And, you know, um, I do want to learn more Indian classical because there's so many rags I can learn and so many um, bandishes, you know. Beautiful. You understand bandish. It's like a, it's a composition. It's a musical composition in the khayal uh, style of singing in of Hindustani classical music. And I'm also working on writing a book on, you know, uh, where I'm sort of work, uh, again, it's the technical part of singing. So it's like how to teach voice in the most painless <laughs> and most effective, most optimal way. So it'll be sort of like a, a reference guide, sort of a thing for vocal teachers. Okay. So when is this book is launching? When the book is? That's a very good question. I'm working on it. And hopefully it should happen by uh, the end of this year. End of this year. Oh, very excited to look forward. So uh, what genre of music do you enjoy singing the most? Your favorite genre in music? Well, um, I, I really enjoy using my voice. So, you know, and I have been trained in various kinds of music and I've listened to so much music. We all have, you know, we have access to so much music now uh, at the snap of our fingers and at the press of the button. So uh, I really enjoy exploring what, what my voice can do. So uh, don't be surprised if I tell you that I love singing in this tiny classical music. Wow. Uh, but I also love singing rock music. You know, I really enjoy how my voice sounds. Yeah. It's just all for the pleasure of it. You know, I connect to various kinds of music. So could you share a memorable moment from your singing career so far? A most memorable one. Most memorable. Unforgettable. Right. Um... So to be honest, uh, being a singer, being on stage, performing for an audience, it's a blessing. And all of these moments are just just happy core memories, you know. Uh, but I would definitely say one thing that really stands out to me um, has been my experience with my grandfather. So uh, my grandfather, uh, my Nanaji, my maternal grandfather, uh, Dr. Mathuradat Pandey, uh, he was a celebrated writer and he was awarded the President's Award like twice and innumerable awards and he was still writing and working prolifically um, even at the age of 93. He passed away in like when he was 94 in 2020. But uh, so he had, he had this uh, desire that I would compose and sing some of his creation, some of the songs he had written. So, um, so he was, uh, he was ill, he was fading, 
uh, at that time, but I came up with this song, his song, you know, uh, which he had written, and I sort of pleaded for him the audio. And just watching him light up and get energetic and just sort of just so much love emanating from him at that moment. I, I felt like I'd done something. I felt like I actually made a difference, you know, through my music and uh, made him really happy. So I think that's one memory that is going to stay with me forever. So nice. So nice. That's a very emotional moment for any granddaughter and a very proud one also. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So what is your creative process like when it comes to composing and writing a music, a song, a new song? What are your thoughts and what all you do? Tell us the process. Right. So uh, what you see what happens is uh, since we're in this in the music industry, there's no one particular way I write songs. So depending on what I'm writing for, so it could be for a client. So the brief is different. The timelines are very different. And when I'm working with, say, uh, may, it could be that I haven't worked with the producer or the writer before, you know, so we sort of make a team to create that uh, particular song so you know one could do it that way or one could just be writing something and the lyrics come first and they come from the depths of your own experience and the brief is uh, there is no brief really because it's just expression and uh, so songs are written that way too and sometimes you know you hear a tune that your friend made and you just start humming a uh, tune and then you put words to it and that's another way a song can be born all right and sometimes you're just walking around and you get inspired and you think of a cool beat and you start producing it on your software and then you know it goes from there so any point could be like an insertion into writing of a song it could be a cool beat that you hear it could be a deadline <laughs> you know so there are Yes. So, uh, Shivani, these days we don't need any particular record labels and any music companies. We we just put our song on reels and it goes it goes viral in few hours, few days. I mean, what what's your take on this? Uh the reels are playing a major role in the music industry. So. Definitely. I mean, uh, it's a good time for content creators. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But I would still say there is a structure yeah. which you have to put yourself through for that music to be heard. Yeah, exactly. Right? So you have to still insert your song, your music. You have to get those numbers attached to your song the metadata you have to enter it you have to put it into distribution websites you know uh, for it to be distributed even on platforms like instagram and uh, or any other platform to be honest youtube if it's playing somewhere it's been tagged it's been you know you've added the metadata you've paid the fees you've taken a membership you know, for your, for your music to be online. So as with everything online, um, you're paying for the services, all right? And then, of course, there's the whole marketing aspect of it. Yeah. There's so much content. It's just a struggle to be seen. The visibility factor is, uh, is real, you know? So... Uh, so you're going to have to put in some sort of strategy and advertisement for your content to show up for them and, yeah. and to meet the right sort of audience, which will pick it up and then share it. And then, of course, things gain momentum and things go viral. But definitely there's a structure that you can do it. So it's not its own process. Yes. So there's no, it's not like, oh, it's instant or it was unplanned. Uh, this could be your case, definitely, but yes. it's it's very minuscule in the 
larger scheme of things. So are there any particular artists or bands you want to collaborate with? So many, so many. But uh, right now, um, what I'm, who I can think of is, I love an artist called Andre Bocelli. Oh, I think he sounds divine. Yeah. And I would love, love, love to do a duet with him and a song with him. Just have, share that space yeah. with yeah. Andre Bocelli. And I also really respect and admire the work of Marty Friedman. He's a guitar player yeah. based out of Tokyo. And he used to uh, play for a metal band in the eight back in the day. <laughs> so I definitely want to work with him because I love his sensibility and the way he composes. And I think we could do something really nice together. That's great. That's great. So you are recently working on your folk songs, right? Yes. Yes, uh, absolutely. I about that move. Sure. So I am from uh, the Himalayas. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm from a, a Himalayan state called Uttarakhand. So I've, uh, so I haven't really lived in Uttarakhand, you know, uh, because so work because yeah. of work. Yeah, we were mostly traveling, me and my parents. So uh, for their work, and I was sort of obviously I had to be with my parents. So we never really stayed in Uttarakhand, uh, but I've always had this desire to connect with the culture of my ancestors and what better way to understand the culture and how the people think, what they feel, what they sound like, than through the folk songs of the place. So I was very fascinated. I, you know, uh, my, so interestingly, my mother has also done her PhD on uh, folk tunes of Uttarakhand. So she has sort of, uh, so by definition, Ujjasi folk tunes are not written down. You know, they are uh, sung by communities and it's more of like a traditional sort of, uh, like a lot of music is written down, right? It's notated, but like classical music is, you know, but uh, folk music is mostly passed down from generation to generation. So the children will hear the parents singing and their children after them. And that's how it's passed along. So my mother, what she's done is she's taken the tune, the authentic tune, whatever she could understand. And uh, because, again, the tune varies, the paragraphs vary, you know, that's the nature of folk music. She she took that and she notated it so that people like me, I guess, you know, who haven't lived in that culture so much, but want to learn more about it, want to sing the music, can get an authentic feel for the music through the uh, recorded material, you know? Yeah. So, uh, uh, so, so I've taken some of the tunes and, you know, reimagined it because, you know, I need to be authentic to my musical influences as well. And there's, I mean, I, it's not like I have to be, there's no other way. I'm going to interpret every tune through my, uh, my hearing, how I interpret music, religion, your religion. through the lens of my uh, experience and education. Uh, so that's, I've taken that, those folk tunes and worked with producers. And so we've come up with a modern founding uh, take on it. So it's in process or is it, is it coming out soon? Uh, so, so I have released about four tracks. Uh, they're on Hooper. Okay, wow, okay, okay. Yes, yes. So uh, I've also ended up doing some songs in Punjabi and, you know, Himachali because I do like folk songs in general. Uh, but most of them are in the Kumauni language. Okay. And so they've already been released and uh, a video has also been released for one of them. So I plan to do more of that for sure. And I'm also working on my, uh, uh, the whole project of that I mentioned earlier. Uh, my Nanaji's yeah so. and yes and these are uh, again I'm these are songs in Sanskrit and the way I'm treating them is that uh, they're going to be popular songs in Sanskrit so usually you'll find that uh, in Sanskrit all the music that we hear is from usually religious texts 
right? Uh, their mantras and uh, other sacred material. But the interesting thing about what I'm trying to do is that um, all of this is profane. It's not sacred. So it's written by a, you know, um, by a writer who, you know, who has lived amongst us and who's just passed away, but he has lived, you know, my analogy. And he's written about uh, mundane topics. Okay. Yeah. So it's like Sanskrit literature, basically. And songs, proper songs in Sanskrit. So okay. I can afford to make them pop songs, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, are there any causes or issues that you are passionate about and what and you want to raise awareness to, through your music any anything you want to circulate a public message from your music or something like that well uh, definitely it would just be like uh, I uh, I care about justice I like things to be fair, you know, around me in society. I care about harmony, you know, that human beings live in harmony with each other, you know, uh, beyond the divisions, artificially created divisions of religion, caste, gender, you know. So any sort of uh, divisions and also um, live in harmony with each other and live in harmony with the natural world. So you could say I'm passionate about the environment. You could say I'm passionate about harmony. You could say I would like to see more peace in the world. And I would like to see a more just world, you know, where people have access to basic, the basics and an access to uh, a good life, a respectable life, which every human being deserves. So definitely I would in the future uh, hope that my music can create more of these values in the world, more of this vibration in the world, definitely. So can you sing one of your favorite songs? One of your <laughs> okay. Or, or, um, composition or whichever you feel like. Um, I'll sing the song I played for my Nanaji that day. Okay. Okay. So this okay. one's called Ashara Se Pratham Divase. It's in Sanskrit. And uh, it's by my Nanaji, Dr. Mathuradat Pandey. And uh, do you understand Sanskrit at all? A um, little bit. Okay. Okay. So, Asharasi Pratham Divase. It's basically the first day of the rainy season. Oh, okay. Ashar. Ashar okay. Kamahina, right? That's it. We get that in Hindi as well. Yes. So, so, as you can imagine, the uh, poet, the writer, he is talking about the first day of the rains and we all know what that feels like, right? After but the hot summer, mm -hmm. you know, everything is just cleansed and renewed. With and, and there's hope and there's, and life seems to just... And it's coming also, it's on the way. Absolutely. <laughs> it's on the way. <laughs> Getting very hot. So, uh, Yes, so he's talking about that, and then he's also talking about how everybody gets amorous, oh. and, you know, yeah. <laughs> in the rainy season. So again, very, very mundane stuff, but relatable. Yeah. So I'd like to sing that for you. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Chanan, Chanan, Chane, Mokta, Munchati, Gurjati, Mandram, Kamaga, Jayam, Avarishati, Shardikano, Avarishati, Shardikano. Madino Nishitam, Sharam. Shanti, <laughs> 
Wow, that was very pure bliss to my ears. It was amazing, Shivangi. It was very good, Jessie. Thank you so very much. Very nice, very nice. Shivangi, my last question to you is: What advice do you have for aspiring singles and budding singles who have who have just come into the industry? Any advice you would like to give them? Oh, um, well, um, so when one sets out to be an artist, right? Uh, one has to remember there is no template, there is no formula. You have to forge your own road, in your own path. And the more you do that, I think the more you can leave a legacy because what you do is coming from an authentic place, a unique place within you. You know. So I would like, I would just like to say that be yourself, be unique, and apart from that. The basics, which are persevere, hustle <laughs> to an extent, and uh, uh, absolutely, uh, and and what else? Basically, this is it. And be yourself. And and one one very very important thing, yes, which I'd love to add is work on your craft. Always keep working on your craft. Very true. Very well said. That is what makes you you, and you'll be able to give the best you can to the world. That's great. That's great. So, Shivani, thank you so much for your time, and we would like to see you another time with another episode, with another series. Thank you so much. So see you very soon. Me, I would love to come back again and thank you so much for having me this time. And I would just like to say to the viewers that if they would like to sort of follow me on my journey, they can join me on Instagram maybe. So my handle is instagram.com slash just my name. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Bye.